Hi everyone, me again. In this video today I want to talk to you about future classic cars and cheap classic cars. I think there's a link between the two. So the reason I wanted to talk about this or the reason I was thinking about this is because I've been talking recently to people about cars which were previously 10 to a dozen. They were previously pretty unappreciated. And you always have that conversation with someone who has that regret. Oh, why did I ever get rid of that Mark 1 Escort? It was a piece of poo at the time. But if I'd have kept hold of that, it would have been worth loads now. The reason it got me thinking about this is because is there a way that we can try to understand the future of classic car appreciation and what people are really going to want in the future, let's say 20 years from now. I think there's perhaps a, a formula, a vague formula you can follow to be in with a chance of selecting a future classic car. So I wrote down a couple of things because I couldn't remember it all in my head. The first thing that I thought of for a future classic, this is using hindsight. So a future classic probably will be one of two. It will be either a car that has always had a, a great appreciation, you know, throughout the, U, the country, the UK in this, this instance, or throughout the scene and will always always will have a great following perhaps it's a, a limited design or um, for example a, a big following rs ford rs or ford cosworth those sort of developments on the other hand it could also be cars which are completely unappreciated no one could give a absolute hell about them uh, they are generally unloved people just take them for granted they're everywhere to be seen they're cheap and uh, generally they just start to disappear until one day you realize actually I don't really see them around anymore examples of this would be things such as the old rear engine Skodas, Skoda Estelles, I think they were, or Skoda Rapid, Skoda 120s, I think those sort of original um, Skodas of the old days, the, the, the old ones that we remember that gave Skoda their uh, notoriety as a uh, less desirable brand of car to have. Larder is another one. You don't really see any Larders around anymore. Well, I, I was told that when we scrapped them we sent them all back to Russia I don't know how true that is maybe one of you might be able to clarify that but apparently that's why we don't see any larders anymore um, they all got scrapped and sent back to Russia let me know in the comments below I haven't got a clue if that's true or not might be a rumor metros Austin Metro people really you could pick them up for 50 quid you know back in the late 90s I had a couple of friends who picked up metros 150 quid 200 quid maximum and they were cars just for knocking about in they got you from A to B there was no real following no one really appreciated them however I look at them now and because they are becoming rarer and they have got good modifying potential being basically uh, sharing a lot of parts with the Mini they're getting a lot more of a following now and they're becoming more and more popular you're seeing more and more coming out into the woodwork people are pulling them out of their granddad's garage, suddenly realising these, these things have got a value again. I think the cheapest Metro that I've seen in good usable condition, you know, with an MOT that's roadworthy, uh, I think it was probably around 1,500 quid. There or thereabouts, when I was having a little browse on eBay. Yeah, that's one thing to take into consideration, whether it is an unappreciated car. If it's currently unappreciated, there's a strong chance that they could become rare and rarity will bring on an appreciation for that car. The next thing I was thinking of was styling trends. So in the 80s, 70s, 80s, 
car design was very boxy. It had very sharp lines. Uh, the swage lines were sharp, straight, square, like they'd been drawn with a ruler. The, the guy or woman who would have designed them would have had a ruler and was literally using a ruler to design these cars. And then gradually, as you go into the late 80s, early 90s, the lines tend to soften until you end up with very curvy, wavy car design. So going into the early 90s, you then start to see versions of the, uh, let's say the 106, Peugeot 106, that became quite a curvy design. I, th I believe that possibly replaced the Peugeot 205. Uh, same kind of mark. So the 205 had that quite a boxy design and then they got rid of that and it seemed to be replaced with the Peugeot 106 which was then quite curvy, uh, had nice rounded edges, none of the sharp swage lines and, and corners in that design. And now what we're seeing is when, when the Peugeot 106 first was released we would look back at the old boxy designs and turn our nose up at them. Oh that's you know that's just old boxy and you know that's so like yesterday. It's only now 30 years on that myself and I believe probably other people because you can see it in the way the market price is going people are looking back at those boxy designs and there's becoming a real big market for them. So I think design probably comes into play and it seems to probably go in waves. It probably goes boxy, wavy. You're starting to see sharp uh, design edges in modern cars today. A good example would be something like a Prius uh, or the, the modern Toyotas that you see. Are they CRVs or something? I can't remember what they are but I see them around these hybrid Toyotas and a lot of them they have these sharp kind of swage lines all around the body panels. Uh, real high definition lines and they're, they're starting to bring back that feeling that the car was designed with uh, maybe uh, a couple of protractors and set squares. <laughs> I know that doesn't exist anymore, they're all on computer, but you know, I'm just imagining if someone put it on paper and drew it. Uh, something else to consider, which probably mm, might be relevant. Uh, hang on a minute. Water. I do drink healthily sometimes, sometimes. Yeah, so with the ban, the planned ban on diesel by 2050, does that mean, whether you have a petrol or diesel vehicle, does it mean that that will be a consideration and diesel or petrol or whatever type of fuel it may take, uh, steam, if you look at steam engines they're quite expensive now, uh, but anyway, does it mean that a diesel of today, a diesel engined car of today, or maybe an early era of diesel engine before we had all of the electronic controls for diesel, the, the, mechanic, the old mechanical style diesel engines, will there be some sort of demand for them? And what I mean by that is, will they be so rare, will they be banished from our streets long ago, that there'll be some sort of fond memory for, for us that were around during that time of the old diesels of yesteryear to the point that we will want to have one just to keep that memory alive. So maybe that's something to consider when you're trying to find a future classic. Another thing is if it's the first in a series of a model or first mark of a model, great examples of this, Mark 1 Escort. Mark 1 Golf, uh, Mark 1 Mini, Mark 1 Metro, I can't think of any others right now but you, you get the impression, you get the gist. If there's a Mark 1 version of a particular car or pre-facelift, Mark 1 Mondeo, uh, Mark 1 Focus maybe, will these become more uh, sought after? further down the line because again I think Mark 1 Escorts, Mark 1 Minis they were 10 to a dozen back in their day and it's only because of the rarity of them now 
that there's that huge demand for them. People want to, to get them back, bring back some history. So should we be looking for unappreciated Mark 1s or Series 1s of cars now? I think I gave the Focus and the Mondeo uh, as an example. Maybe a Peugeot 106, a Series 1 Peugeot 106, or even a Citroen Saxo. I don't know. Uh, but that might be something to consider when you're trying to select a potential future classic. Lastly, special editions. Uh, I don't have a lot to back this up, but special editions always seem to go well, especially within the collector's side of things. I know Peugeot did things such as the Roland Garros. Uh, they also have the rally version of the 106s. Um, VW did their Harlequin editions, and these do tend to have a bit of a following. So again, maybe something to consider, unless it's a special edition Corsa, because we all know special edition Corsas, they made tens of thousands of them. So they're not really that special, but hey, I digress. So I have a friend who wants to get a classic car. He's on a budget. What he's finding is any sort of car that currently is considered classic and there's a following for if he can find one in the right price range which is difficult in the first place he then seems to have a bit of a nightmare trying to get it insured the insurance companies seem to know the market value of some of these cars and where, whether there's a following so the reason I think it's linked why these two things are linked with cheap classic cars and future classics is because I think cheap classic cars are future classic cars and I think that's where you need to be looking to get yourself a cheap classic let's be honest the car is going to be 20 years old by now anyway whatever you're looking for 15 20 years old so it's getting on for being a classic if you keep if you get a good one you keep it you look after it it will develop into a classic car and it will become more and more sought after it will gain value it will appreciate it won't depreciate and if anything it should become an investment that's what i think so let me know your thoughts in the comments below i'm interested to know what you think could be a future classic car what is currently a classic car which is maybe unappreciated and could get you on the the ladder to classic car ownership and ones that's relatively cheap to ma maintain and, in and insure. That's probably another good advantage actually. So something that's a an currently unappreciated future classic, it's going to be relatively cheap to run isn't it? The insurance will be low, the purchase value will be low, there's going to be loads of parts around, you know all these cars that are going to be just thrown to the scrapyard so there'll be loads of parts for them in the scrappies so it'll be relatively easy and cheap to maintain them as well yeah I hadn't thought of that so let me know your thoughts uh, cheap classic cars currently future classic cars and anything else you should really add to the formula when trying to select a future classic car I think that's it I think I've covered everything thank you again for watching Make sure you like and subscribe for more. Get involved. Give us some comments below. Yes, follow us on Facebook. Hazard. Follow Hazard on Facebook. Make sure you follow Hazard on Facebook to keep up to date with all of our uh, meets and anything else we might be arranging. I don't know if that's a clue. We might be organising other things. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, at Hazard Retros. And if you can come along to our meets, even better. Our meets are on the first Sunday of every month. It's at Evegate Business Village near Smeath in Ashford, Kent. Uh, postcode is TN256SX. That's it, guys. It's been good to see you again. Thanks for listening. Hopefully I've not bored you. And see you again soon. Bye. <laughs>